Hi, and welcome to my video. I'm Alex, the CEO of Green Cafe, BK Beauty Studios, and Slay Boutique NYC. I decided to record this video today because I've hosted four pop-up shops and I've been a vendor in three. And what has become evident to me is that a lot of people do not have pop-up etiquette. So what I mean by that is that they understand that, you know, you come as a vendor at a pop-up and you bring your inventory, but they don't know all that it takes to go in to have a successful pop-up experience. I realized that there's so much value in having pop-up etiquette, so I created a list of the 17 basic rules that are most valuable to me um, when deciding to be a vendor in a pop-up shop. So I have the rules here in my other phone and I'm going to read them and they're not in any particular order. They're just the 17 things that are super important to me that I've learned as I've gone on and hosted and been in uh, multiple pop-up shops. So first of all, do not beat yourself up. If you're getting ready for your first or second or third pop-up shop, I realize that this is not something that people just know. Like this is something that has to be learned. In my first pop-up shop, I didn't know any of this either. I came and there were a lot of tables that were a lot more decorated and full and bright, you know, than my table. Thank God I still had a great pop-up shop, but this is not something that you just know. This is something that you learn from experience. So I decided to do this video so that anyone that is interested or anyone that wants to be a vendor in my pop-up shop is fully prepared because pop-up shops are, let's be real, about networking and about making money. So the first rule is to ask questions, have open communication with the host, understand that this is a business venture, so you should be well informed, um, ask the host if they're going to be multiple vendors that offer the same products as you, because me as a vendor, I try my best to limit having the same types of vendors. So if I have a lash vendor, I'm going to try my best to not have a second lash vendor because pop-up shops are not about competition <clears throat> they're about showcasing your best work so i don't want competition to be at the forefront of your mind when you're walking in and there are five different lash vendors and now you're trying to beat out the other one it should not be about that the second rule is to create a budget so i don't think that people really understand that you should have a pop-up shop budget you're going to need money to put in to your table um your Budget for your pop-up shop obviously should not succeed the amount of money that you're going to make. It should be an investment. Another thing is I want you to remember that, like I said, pop-up shops are not only about making money. They are about making money, but they're also about networking. They're also about future opportunities. So let's say you run a bakery and you have, you know, cupcakes on your table. You can reach out to someone that potentially has a wedding the next month and they need someone, you know, to book for their wedding. So just keep in mind that it's about, you know, sales today and it's also about future opportunities. So always look for the future opportunities, ask questions, pay attention to the questions that people ask you and always try to get that today money and that tomorrow money. So the third rule is to have a price list. I think that this is something that often goes overlooked until maybe your third, fourth, fifth pop-up. Having a price list is very important. So you wanna remember the prices of your inventory as much as possible, but sometimes, even for me, it gets hard to remember every little thing and how much that it costs, especially if you have a large inventory. So having it in best case scenario, printed and framed on your table would be the best thing to do so that if someone asks a question and you happen to not remember, you can say, oh, this is, oh, it's right there, $10. So rule number four kind of backpacks off of rule number three, but it is its own rule. You want to have well-rounded pricing. If possible, it's good to have something in every price range so that if people come and they wanna spend $10 at your table, they can. And if someone comes and they wanna potentially spend $100 at your table, they can. I feel like having something in every price range for everyone is gives you more chance of having more sales. Um, when thinking about your prices, you do want to be reasonable. I do also want you to consider to not undercharge so that people are not like, whoa, this is such a crazy deal, and you end up undervaluing yourself and not making as much money as you could have made. So that is just a strategic decision that you have to decide yourself, um, but it's something to think about. I do recommend having deals for pop-up shops. Typically every pop-up shop, like let's say if something that I sell is $25, it'll probably be 20 at the pop-up shop or 
if it's fifteen dollars it'd be two for twenty five um I love the two for deals or the buy one get one half off deals or whatever that encourage people to buy more than one um but you know people love deals um having something maybe even if it's not a deal but the way that it's worded makes it seem like a deal that's something that's very appealing to the ear and appealing to the eye you can have signs these right here are two for whatever you can have featured items everything is 25 but this specific item just for today is 15. Um, i think that that's always a good idea because people love to feel like they're getting a sale all right so the fifth rule is a big one um, it is something that always goes overlooked on people's first pop-up shop, sometimes second pop-up shops, and it is tabletop. You would think after thinking about it, like, duh, you want to have a really pretty, creative, inviting tabletop, but you don't really think about how much thought and energy goes into it until you start planning it. So my advice for a tabletop is to have a personalized tablecloth um 3d decor so a personalized tablecloth you can get i i get mines from staples same day but there's multiple sites that you can get yours from if you don't need it same day um and you can have your logo on your tablecloth you can make it bright and colorful you can put whatever you want on it as long as it's bright and colorful and inviting um 3D decor can be like, so there's like shelves that you can stack your inventory on. If you sell clothes, you can have a clothing rack behind you. Um, you can have flowers, you can have, you know, uh, confetti, whatever it is that you like that you, you pick to decorate your table with, just make sure it's creative and it's fun and it's bright and it's inviting because a pop-up shop, it's not a party, but it's a gathering and it's a celebration and you're proud of your business. So you want people to see that. I think it's important to have a theme, have a color scheme. I think um, it's important to fill your table, not only with inventory, but with fillers. So your table should look full. So let's say you don't have enough inventory to fully fill your whole table you know from beginning to end you can have things strategically placed you can have vases with flowers you can have whatever it is that you want on your table to make it seem full because a sparse table is less inviting I think a good idea is to have customers take pictures in front of your table like let's say they buy something from you and you say hey can you take a picture with me or in front of my table showing you know what you just purchased or just showing the background of my table i think that that's a really good idea and also going back to the personalized tablecloth i think it's very important to have your social media or website on the tablecloth uh printed on the tablecloth so you can have your logo and your social media or your website so that people know not only who you are but how to contact you i think that it's extremely important to have a banner I think that this is something that, again, often goes overlooked when preparing to rent a table at a pop-up shop, but it is so amazing when I walk past the table and I see a big banner uh, with your logo, with your social media, telling me who you are. Also, my banners I get same day from Staples, but just like a tablecloth, there's multiple websites that you can get personalized banners made and shipped to you. Um, a customized banner should tell everyone or give everyone an idea of exactly what it is that you do. So rule number six is inventory management. So I always want you to be positive and I always want you to overestimate, not grossly overestimate, but overestimate the amount of inventory that you will need and that you will uh, project to sell even though it's an amazing feeling to say I sold out at this pop-up shop the more inventory you have the more you can potentially sell also consider like I said before that you're not only selling products you can sell services you can sell classes you can sell future potential sales sales are not only this is what I have here give me the money for it you know think outside of the box when you think about selling and think how can I monetize the most? Rule number seven also goes overlooked all of the time, so I needed to make it its own rule. Have QR codes. Have QR codes printed, framed if possible. Um, that is the new best thing. 
QR codes are everywhere, especially because they're COVID friendly and you can just use your phone and boop and you don't have to touch something to use a QR code. Um, every payment method that you accept, you should have the QR code for it on your table. And I think that it's a big advantage to not only accept cash, but to accept electronic payments. Also, people love to feel like they have options. They love to feel like, well, I'm not gonna use cash or Zelle, I'm gonna use Cash App. You know, so I think that it's great if you can accept every single electronic payment that there is. I think that that's a great idea. So even though accepting electronic payments is a great idea, we've moved on to number eight right now, which is also accept cash. People that come to pop-up shops typically set a budget for themselves and I'm going to go into this pop-up shop. I'm not going to spend more than $100 and they have it in cash because it's just easier to manage cash. So when accepting cash, you need to have change. This is something that I did not consider my first, maybe second pop-up shop to have change because sometimes people have 20s and 50s and 100s and you want to be able to have change for them without running to the corner store across the street or running to the next table and asking them for, for change. You want to have change and prepare, have, you know, $100 change in ones fives tens and a couple twenties and as people buy you'll have more change available but definitely start out with at least a hundred dollars change so that if people do come with cash you can you have change for them another big thing that i did not think of my first pop-up shop was having a fanny pack having somewhere to put the cash that people give you um i say a fanny pack because that's something that you can put on you and you don't have to like hold it so not like a purse that you have to hold and remember to put on your arm like a fanny pack goes on your waist or goes on your shoulder it stays there you don't move it and that's that i think that that's a great option for where to hold your money um a lot of people use like the cash boxes but i just i like for the money that i have to stay on me so like if i go to the bathroom I don't have to leave my cash box even though like it has a key but i also don't have to like use the key to open it every five minutes it goes in my fanny pack that's on me i close it that's that all the money stays there so definitely having somewhere secure for your money to go and stay on you is very important so i recommend a fanny pack so rule number 10 is gift bags so when i say gift bags i mean like the thank you come again bags so we know plastic bags have pretty much begun to become phased out so a paper bag is probably what you're going to have i think that that's something that typically goes overlooked people think like i'm gonna they're gonna buy something and i'm just hand them what they bought but i think it's very professional to have a bag to put it in people are gonna buy multiple things at a pop-up shop so you know they need a bag to hold everything that they bought i think that if you can put your logo on the bag whether it be a sticker or it be printed on it that'd be amazing it's a cool idea to have a business card that you can throw into the bag um have a little you know like the crinkly paper or like the something to add a little razzle dazzle to make you different from everyone else you know this is obviously not necessary but it's something that's just really creative and can set you apart from the other vendors that they go to that day so that brings us to number 11 which is come on time Ooh, child. <laughs> the first step to coming on time um, is communicating with the host setup time and then communicating that same day that setup time is still the same time I've hosted pop-up shops to where last minute unimaginable things happen and setup time gets pushed 30 minutes and I have to tell everybody hey guys it's not 2 it's 2 30 now but um just communicating with the host okay setup time is two o'clock be there at 201 I want you to get as much time in as you can to set up and I want you to get as much time in as you can to sell your items when the pop-up shop does begin. An hour that you're late is an hour that you could have sold merchandise. And once you pay for the table, you're there for the whole time that you've paid for. So if the pop-up is from 2 to 8 and you get there at 4.30, you've now missed two and a half hours of potential selling time and you can't get that back. Another thing about coming on time or coming early is that tables, vendor tables, are usually first come, first serve. So some pop-up shop hosts, which you can ask your host, you should, um, they pick where every vendor is going to be. Me personally as a host and a lot of hosts that I know, they give you a first come, first serve 
decision of where you want your table to be so if you're the first second third one there you can pick i want this first table or i want this middle table you have the option to pick which table you want which can positively or negative negatively impact your sales depending on what you're selling next is rule number 12 which is have help I don't think people understand how much work pop-up shops really take, especially if it's your first one. You should have help. One thing that I struggled with when running and starting businesses is that I thought having help would discredit how much work that I did. So I had to do everything. So at the end of the day, I could be like, I did it all by myself and look how great it was. No, that's how you hurt yourself. Have help. Because now, not only does it give you a biggest, bigger percentage of having a successful event, it also takes your mind off of a lot of the little things if you have someone to help you do so that you can focus on the bigger things. Two people are always better than one. Three people are always better than two. Um, it's always great to have someone that you trust, whether it be family, friends, someone you hire, when you create a budget for that, to help you. Let's say you have to step away from the table to go use the bathroom. You don't want to have an empty table. You know, it's always good to have someone there helping. And then I feel like two people behind a table as opposed to one just always looks good. Having help, having support just always looks better. So rule 13 is another pretty big one and it is packaging. Um, I think that you should customize everything. If you can customize everything that you have, all of your, your inventory, all of your bags, all of your packaging should be customized. It should have your logo on it. If you have pens, they should have your logo on it so that when customers do buy your things, they're reminded of who this was and who this really creative vendor was that had their logo on everything. Um, be creative. Stickers are are uh, cheap and easy fixes to customizing. You know, if you don't have the budget for like embossing your logo on things, get a sticker, pop that sticker on whatever it is. Avery is a very good sticker printing company that I've used in the past. It's very quick. You can print it straight from um, a regular printer. You can upload your logo from your phone, from your computer, print it out through Avery. And that's another thing that's important, having a logo, having a personalized logo, get someone to make it or make it yourself, make sure nobody else has it, get that on a sticker or get that on all of your, all of your inventory. And that's a very, very easy, effective way for people to know where they just bought this merchandise from. So rule number 14 is plan. I don't think I'd have enough time to explain to you enough how much planning is important when planning to be a vendor at a pop-up shop. Um, do not procrastinate. Like usually vendors seek out, uh, hosts seek out vendors weeks before the actual pop-up date and people tend to say, oh, I have three or four weeks until the pop-up, I have time. And then they put it off and put it off and put it off and then the pop-up shop is three days from now and you're rushing to do everything. Do not do that. Use the time that you have when you book the vendor table and plan everything. Plan first, make lists, execute. It's better to be ready early so that you don't have to worry about anything. Only leave the necessities that have to be done the night before to the night before. Like if you're making food, prep should be put like probably done the night before, not two weeks before. So only leave the things that you have to do the night before to the night before and do not leave anything to the same day of because you're probably going to be up late the night before prepping whatever you have to and you don't want to stress yourself out waking up crazy early the day of and scrambling and then get to the event late because you didn't have another choice. So rule number 15 is another big one and that is to promote. Promote your business. So this is something that you should be doing on a day-to-day -day basis anyway if you're running a business, but especially if you're about to be a vendor in a pop-up shop, promote that pop-up shop like i want your auntie from colorado to be flying in to come to your pop-up shop friends and family love to support and to say we're here at sally's pop-up shop and we're supporting her and look what she's done 
you know, so it's important to get those sales from friends and family and also get your friends and family to promote to their friends and family to come to your pop-up shop. It's important to utilize your social media, get all of your loyal customers to come, get them to invite their friends and family, like promote. From the first day you know you're going to be a vendor in a pop-up shop, you should be promoting that pop-up shop around the clock so that people know what time is it's going to be what day it's going to be where it's going to be and that you're going to be there and that they should come and support you if every one of the vendors in a pop-up shop promote you're going to now have customers from every one of the vendors because people don't always come to a pop-up shop just to support one table and usually even if they did when they get there they look around and they see all these other tables and they're like "Ooh, a candle Ooh, i like that sweater Ooh." those edibles, you know, so I think that that's a great thing to always do, promote the pop-up shop because that's how we get people to stop in. You're always gonna have outside foot traffic, which is why it's also something to consider when considering being a vendor, is considering the location of the pop-up shop. You know, if it's near a busy street, if it's a sunny day, all of that you should take into consideration. But it, even if it's the gloomiest rainy day and it's not a busy street, promote that pop-up shop because some things we can't predict, promote it. And I'm telling you, people will show up and support you. So rule number 16 is another big one and it is to engage. So I understand there are introverts in the world and those introverts may wanna start a business and there's nothing wrong with that. But let me tell you, at a pop-up shop, you have to engage with everyone that's there. So if you know you're an introvert, I feel like the person that's there with you, your friend or family member, should be an extrovert and they should be the one that's like, hey, come to this table, welcome. Like you want to be that overly excited, just drink coffee girl that's at the front of Uniglow that stops you when you first walk in. I want you to be like her. I want people to feel your energy and be like, I want to go to that table. I don't even know what they sell in, but I'm interested. I want to go to their table. This is extremely important. Even some of the people that weren't planning on coming to your table, if you're anything like me, that's kind of like a little awkward you'll come over to the table even if you weren't planning to and even if you don't buy anything you'll now have a sense of oh this person sells this my aunt wanted to buy this let me see if i could get this for her or i wasn't planning on coming to this table and buying anything but now i am because now i know that you sell this thing that i didn't even know that i wanted um so engaging is super important smile loud hellos don't be sitting there with a straight face like invite people to your table make people feel like i want to go over there because that person is so is so excited i want to be as excited as as them to purchase their merchandise so the 17th and final rule is to always be in good spirits i'm a very spiritual person and i do believe that putting out good energy will get you good energy so even if you're not the most spiritual person it's just about the law of energy you know if you come in and you are in good spirits and you feel really positive about the day there's more chance that you're going to have a successful event keep calm try your best to not be overwhelmed understand that people feed off of your energy there's a reason why you started this business you're successful you're going to be continue to be successful and trust yourself and just have that calm understanding of this is going to be a great day some things that i can't control may happen and this is still going to be a great day so something that i do is have positive statements that i say to myself in my head over and over while simultaneously engaging with the audience um just things to remind me to have a good day and it's gonna be okay and keep my spirits up and those kind of help to affirm and reaffirm the fact that it's gonna be everything is gonna be okay another thing that i practice doing is not limiting my profit projection is always good you can have a healthy sense of projection of like well this is the amount of inventory i have so i would like to make this much today but also really believe that there is no limit um, there's no number that you can put. You don't know if someone is going to come and say, wow, 
I would like to book you for the next five years because I would like your inventory in my office building. Like you never know what can come from a pop-up. You never know who's gonna be there and who wants to support you. So don't ever limit what you can do or belittle yourself. Understand that anything is possible and that if you keep a positive mindset, you're gonna have a great day. So thank you for watching my video. I hope that my rules help to give you a better idea of how to have good pop-up etiquette. And I hope that your future pop-ups are all super successful and that you have great experiences either being a vendor at pop-up shops or hosting your own.